This week on the Trend Out Loud podcast, I understand the NBA's right. I understand the NBA's right. That's why I'm not even mad at the 25 game suspension. All I'm just saying is that Ja and his team, which now you're going to see, they're starting to push back. They should have handled it from the beginning and just been real about it. All right, let's put this John Morant and gun situation to bed one last time. and I don't want to talk about it anymore. All right, so the NBA has finished their investigation and the John Morant second gun incident, um, and they have decided to suspend John Morant for 25 games. Now, I think this may be the third podcast I've done about this, or maybe the fourth. Um, and every time I talk about this, I get dragged in a comment section. Nobody agrees with what I'm saying, but it's still my opinion, and I still hold true to it. Um, but I think um, the NBA this time made a great decision um, with the 25. Um, again, I don't necessarily, for me personally, I don't agree with it, but I think their decision was good. Like, I, I mean to say, like, not that they did a great decision. Like, I respect their decision. I don't think they went overboard, and I was afraid that they were going to go overboard. Um, even Nike has decided to stand beside um, John Morant again on the second incident, which I thought was really good. Um, and I haven't heard of him losing any sponsors um, for the second incident. And to me, that was what bothered me the most, not just like a suspension or that uh, the NBA had a problem or Nike or I think it was Gatorade. I just think that they, they were overreacting. And that's what I had a problem with. And I think it was a result of how Ja and his camp um, had dealt with this situation. So let me give you a little bit more detail. And then, like I said, we'll, we'll sum it up. And hopefully, I mean, you know, we shouldn't hear back from Ja Morant until I think December it's going to be the 25 games. So we might come back around Christmas time or whatever. Um, but anyways, so when this originally happened um, and Ja Morant was caught in the strip club with... Um, a gun, um, he came out and had this apology that was so like, oh my gosh, I'm going through a lot of mental health issues and I have to be better and I have to rehabilitate and I need to check myself in somewhere, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't like why I don't like that he did that. Again, it's just my personal opinion. And um, what I mean by this, I think it's episode uh, 20. Um, and what I mean why I didn't like it is that I just think that the apology went too far and opened up um, too much of like um, too much of a window for his sponsors and the NBA and, and people to just tear him down. Um, and I think if I was in his situation, um, I would have handled it different. And every time I've tried to explain it, it's never come across right. I mean, but maybe some of you do agree with me. It's the people who don't agree that always are the ones who comment, so it's, it's fine. But maybe some of you do agree with me. And so what I've decided today is that I'm going to tell you, like, verbatim what I think Ja should have said, okay? So I think Ja should have said, listen, I was in a strip club. I was partying, uh, whatever. We're throwing around money. I had my shirt off. I was drunk. I was smoking, I was doing whatever, you know, a 23-year-old is allowed to do, or anybody at any age is allowed to do. I was partying, nothing wrong with that. I was in a strip club, nothing wrong with that. Uh, one of my friends has a legal gun, legal gun, and I showed it on IG Live. It's really just as simple as that. I understand the NBA, the franchise that I am signed to, I understand that they are a private company, and they want a certain image to be portrayed and i get that that image um to in their eyes may not be how um uh how um i should be portraying myself and um so to the nba um you know i'm sorry if i made you feel that way and i'm sorry if i made you your your you know your your sponsors or your supporters or whatever and you know i'm okay with you know the repercussions you know basically that's about it so, but what I'm trying to say is that when you, when you say that, and like I said in my first podcast, like, yo, John was doing what millions of 23-year-olds do every day in the club on, you know, and 
wherever, not even in the club, and I, and I compare them to, to Kyle Rittenhouse, like, America loves guns. The, it's the Second Amendment, right? And again, like I said, it wasn't an illegal firearm. There was no police. The police did an investigation. Nobody got, there was no charges. There was no nothing. There was no bodies on the gun. Like, yo, and I just think that the fact that he was so like, oh my gosh, I was so in the wrong, and this was this, and I need to do better, and I need to this, and my time, like, I just, I just think that going so deep, and I compared it, I'm comparing it to Tiger Woods, I don't know if uh, some of you out there might not remember of what happened to Tiger Woods, but when Tiger Woods had his accident, and um, uh, his car accident, and then it was, re- um, it was exposed that he was cheating on his wife with like hundreds of girls, and it was like a big press conference and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I am so sorry. And I have to do better as a human being. And I have to do this, whatever. And people just ripped him apart and the, the, the PGA, whatever. And then 10 years later on this HBO special, he came back. And he's like, yo, I wish I didn't, um, you know, I don't know if he said it or somebody that said it. That was like, yo, he shouldn't have made such a big pref- press conference with apologizing. And, you know, that was a matter between him and his wife. And, and I know that's not the, the, the same issue, but the PGA was like, that's not how we want to be represented. Like, that's a personal matter. And I just think, again, it's not an, an exact, um, um, it's not an exact um, example because I understand one is, is cheating and one is, is a firearm. But my point is that neither of those offenses were illegal, right? Like, neither, neither of those two men did anything wrong. And um, I said this in another podcast, too, where it's like, yo, Donald Trump, that's why Donald Trump gets away with what he gets away with. Now, Donald Trump actually does real wrong things, but then he doesn't apologize. But that's why even when he does wrong things and breaks the law, he has so many supporters because he doesn't come out and be like, oh, my gosh, I have to do this, whatever, blah, blah. He's like, look, I took these documents. I did this. And this is just what it is like done. So and I just think that. That, that that should be looked at as an example. Um, and you know what? And if Jeff feels like he does have those, you know, mental health issues and this, et cetera, et cetera, I just don't believe that that's what it was, right? Um, and if that's the case and you, you have that issue, then fine. But don't use that in your apology and make it seem like you're so low because then people are are, are going to attack you and these companies are going to come, come at you and then you're not going to get any support from 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 people um from like the you know the fans or you know the people spectating like me so that's really really what it is you know and i i think and let me touch quickly on the second incident um the second incident was just stupid that i was like okay yo the first one was him just being a hip-hop kid like that was stupid i don't know what he was doing um sorry not that sorry sorry i'm mixing up the two the first one was i didn't feel like he did anything so wrong, and if but it, I was okay. Like, hey, if the NBA wants to suspend him, it's it's their choice. But I didn't think that he did anything wrong, me personally. The second one, the reason why I thought he was wrong, and I was like, yo, the people around him are just are are are, are horrible. He needs to get rid of them. Is that if you come out and you say, oh my gosh, I was so wrong. This was so wrong. Da 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 da. da. You can't two months later be in a car with. And what they're saying is a toy gun, but you can't come out now with the toy gun and and do that, right? If like that's what I'm saying. If you make that kind of apology, you can never do anything like that again. And again, that's why Trump gets away with things because he's like, "Yo, I didn't do anything wrong. This is cool, blah blah blah." But I'll accept your punishment. Well, Trump doesn't say he'll accept his punishment, but um, anyways, that's what I would have done with Jaw. And I don't think I don't like how they handled the second one. And you could tell. That Ja and his team are not even, um, are, are kind of like changing course a little because I just saw an article where they just came out and said um, that they think the NBA is out to get them. And hold on, let me read it. Ja Morant's camp reportedly feels like the NBA and the media are out to get them. So you can see that, you know, Ja's team hasn't really handled this well and now they're kind of pushing back and... Like I said, they came out and said it wasn't a real gun. Yo, if he would have the first time said what I said already, and now the second time, again, come out and be like, yo, listen, I understand that that incident happened, and then I apologize, and I said I was wrong, and I want to go into treatment. You guys suspended me for eight games. But listen, I was in the car rapping the NBA young boy, and it was a, it was a lighter. It's not a real gun. 
but he only came out like a week or a week and a half later and said it. And then again, was like, oh my gosh, I'm really sorry. I have to do better. I have to be a better role model. I'll accept anything, whatever. Like, I just, we just have to stop this. Oh my gosh, yes, uh, I need this. I, I, I need treatment. I'm, I'm in such a bad place. I'll accept anything. Like, yo, just be real about it, man. Like, I was in a strip club, I held up my boy's gun. I didn't do anything illegal. And it's really simple as that. I understand that I employed by the NBA and if they don't want that kind of representation, I understand and I'll accept my punishment. Hey, second time. Hey, dude, uh, I understand that I'm employed by the NBA, but this is a toy gun. This is a toy gun. This is a lighter. And again, if 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 the commissioner wants to, you know, um hand me down a suspension for holding a toy gun, I'll respect it. This is what I think a lot of you don't understand is like I understand the NBA's Right. I understand the NBA is right. That's why I'm not even mad at the 25 game suspension because Adam Silver is like, even if it was a toy gun or not a toy gun, we don't want to reflect that image. And that is fine. Like, I am OK with that. All I'm just saying is that Ja and his team, which now you're going to see they're starting to push back. They should have handled it from the beginning and just been real about it and be like, yo, I have toy lighters. I have toy guns. That was in the car. I understand that I did this two months ago, but this is how it is now. He's waiting too long and making these big, heartfelt, deep apologies that are like mental health and betterness and this, and I need treatment. Like, bro, you need treatment because you, you, you flashed a gun in, in a scream and you're, you're at, with your boy in a car and you, you, you flash a, a lighter. Like, yo, know, I just, uh, anyways, I don't like that, but that's how um, athletes and all these people in the public eye um, have been trained to deal with things when they come out. It's this big um, uh, publicist written, uh, deep heartfelt, you know, I need to take time away to reflect on myself. And then once once people hear that, they tear you apart. Um, anyways, and I just want to make it clear, I'm not saying that anybody should be anything like Donald Trump, <laughs> right? Because we all know that that, that that dude is crazy. But Look at how he handles situations um, and, uh, you know, maybe take a little note here or there um, um, from him. Jeez, can't believe I'm even saying that. Um, anyways, that's it, man. John Morant, I hope, I hope, because this is two big apologies now, I hope that you say what you're going to, uh, I hope that you're going to do what you say you're going to do because if you come out, or third time and have any sort of incident or anything that's happening to you um, along these lines that happens to you along these lines, like it will be over for you. But I honestly believe that um, Ja will do better. I believe that he's probably going to have a very quiet summer. He's going to fly way under the radar. Um, and when the season starts, I don't think you'll hear much of him. And um, I was reading somewhere that they feel like John ja Morant could be uh, one of the biggest you know, redemption stories or comeback stories in NBA or sports or, or something like that. But I, I love Ja. I think he's a good kid. Um, I think he's a good dude. Um, I think maybe the people around him need to be checked a little bit and be a little bit more um, uh, ballsy in their approaches, maybe, um, you know, and a little bit more um, firm uh, and not and not so scared. But Hey, what, what do I know, man? You know, um, anyways, that's just my opinion. Peace out. Ja, yo, do better, Ja. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Turn Out Loud. Peace!